Congressman Lafayette, thanks for joining us this week. Yep. So, one to start off on the, the politics. We had a, a big week for, for politics here in D.C. and across the country. Some pretty important primary results this week. I just kind of wanted to tick through some of them with mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about what happened in Georgia, particularly in the Republican Senate primary. Right. Well, you had uh, a self-funder, uh, Mr. Perdue, uh, come out of it uh, as the lead vote-getter. And of the three congressmen running, Jack Kingston uh, of Georgia came in second. Uh, and because Purdue didn't get enough votes to, to put off a runoff, there's be a runoff in, in July, and, and some of the more ballyhooed, very conservative candidates, the other two members, Gingrey and, and uh, Brown, they were in the 10% range. And so, you know, it's going to set up an interesting dynamic. My, my sense is, you know, that uh, of the seven candidates that were running, clearly these are, are two of the more center-right candidates. But it's also my sense that in order to get over the finish line in July, Kingston in particular, I think, is going to have to hew uh, a little bit more to the right and try and get the support of the the very conservative voters who voted for somebody else. But certainly for national Republicans, these are the two candidates yeah. they had hoped would make it through to the runoff. Yeah, no, it, it, it's good news for the the, uh, the establishment Republican Party and that these are these are the two horses that people were rooting for. Speaking of the establishment, which, by the way, doesn't seem to be a dirty word anymore. No, it's not. Uh, Kentucky, yeah. Yeah. Mitch McConnell, well, yeah. was probably the most highlighted uh, primary challenge. Obviously, if if, major, if minor, Minority Leader McConnell had lost, right. the ripple effect would be enormous. Talk to us about what happened there. Well, th this is one of those things where the, the lead up was, uh, you know, uh, much greater than the, the end result. At the end of the day, Mitch McConnell buried his opponent, who was backed by these uh, conservative groups, Club for Growth and Freedom Works and so forth and so on. And this was supposed to be the key test of, of the Tea Party versus the establishment, and they were going to take out Mitch McConnell, which would have been a pretty big deal, but it, again, it wasn't close. And, and it does point up to the fact that, that uh, you have, uh, sometimes they rally behind these candidates, in this case Mr. Bevan, who's a flawed candidate. I mean, he. He uh, roundly was criticizing some government programs that he apparently was for, uh, you know, <laughs> sort of in the John Kerry -esque, <laughs> John Kerry esque moment. You know, he's he's criticizing Mitch McConnell for being in support of something when he, in fact, prior to running against Mitch McConnell, was in favor of it. And now he's against it. So, a bad vetting of candidates, and and uh, Mitch McConnell handled them pretty pretty easily. Well, another race that, that uh, there was a lot of attention paid to was in Idaho, yep. uh, where Congressman Mike Simpson was facing a very well-funded uh, challenger from his right, backed by the Club for Growth. And Club for Growth had made a, uh, big proclamations about how they were taking out Mike Simpson. Right. Talk to us about how that ended up. Well, not so good for, <laughs> for the forces that wanted to take out Mike Simpson. And, you know, the, the, the change that you're seeing, and, and so uh, people aren't sleeping anymore. The the, the the key to some of this Tea Party electoral success has been they uh, target um, midterm, low turnout elections. For instance, we talked about the Dave Joyce primary in Ohio uh, last week, week before. I think the voter turnout was 18 percent. And, and so in an 18 percent turnout model, you really get the motivated voters of the party, Republican or Democrat, that actually turn out. And so uh, they have been able, with some modest success in the past, to sneak into those things. Uh, put a couple hundred thousand dollars behind their horse, and you know that person will will skate through and then become the nominee. Not not happening. Uh, Mike Simpson was uh, supported by the National Rifle Association, the Chamber of Commerce, uh, defending Main Street, and uh, you know he basically met fire with fire and he beat him uh, and uh, beat him by about 20 points. Well, it wasn't just a bad week politically for some of the conservative organizations. It was a bad week on, on policy-wise as well. Sure. The Water Resources and Reform Development Act. Right. Been waiting for the conference report. The conference yeah. report finally came out, yeah. went to the House. Heritage Action, a, a big conservative organization yeah. here in D.C., key voted the vote saying that it needed to be opposed. Right. What happened? Well, it, it passed 400 to something, 413 to 4 or some such thing. And, and, and that's a pretty big repudiation of those people that, that wanted the bill defeated, you know, but uh, two things. One, uh, the Water Resources Development and, and uh, Reform Act 
is how uh, the government it authorizes funding for flood control projects, dredging projects in the lakes and the harbors, uh, safe drinking water, sewers, and things like that. Really, really not hyper-partisan stuff. It doesn't spend any money. It's an authorization bill. Uh, and it's, it's really important in terms of getting people back to work and taking care of infrastructure and communities that this bill passed. The, the fact that, and, and I think that you know, this ties directly into these primary election results, the fact that, that you had these primary elections where some of these groups are being a little spanked uh, has caused uh, members not to be as fearful. And, and you know, if, if you think that the water bill is a good bill, you're going to vote for it, despite the fact that somebody says, oh, if you vote for it, I'm going to give you an F on your permanent record or whatever the case may be. <laughs> and, and so I, th I think that's a hopeful sign, not necessarily for the rest of this conference because we have an election coming up, but moving forward, I think it's kind of hopeful. Another issue that's kind of dominated the news here in D.C. outside of, of, of just the, the elections has been the scandal involving the V.A. Yep. Uh, and I chatted to you beforehand about this, saying that this one feels a little different yep. uh, for me because unlike some of the other scandals, unlike Benghazi right. or the IRS scandal, those seemed very partisan in nature. This one really, you, you've, you've heard, uh, you know, concern about it from both the right and the left. Talk to us a little bit about this scandal and do you think this has long-lasting implications here? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's going to have long-lasting political implications for the Obama administration, but I, I do think it's going to have long-lasting uh, implications. I mean, and I will be surprised if, if Secretary of Veterans Affairs Shinseki uh, lasts much longer. I mean, th th this, uh, this is a horrible story where uh, at a, and it's more than one VA hospital, but the one that's in the spotlight is that there were waiting lists that were manipulated and apparently if you knew somebody you got to the tab list that people were intentionally uh, denied appointments uh, the allegation is 30 veterans died waiting for an appointment and and care at the VA and and that's not something that that uh, the congress republicans or democrats are going to sit still for uh, you know obviously the the commitment to uh, veterans both in action and rhetoric is pretty pretty strong here in Washington and I uh, I think that they, the president, in order to get get ahead of this thing, so that it doesn't become his problem as opposed to just a big problem, uh, is is he's going to have to uh, engineer some major changes at the VA, and 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 some heads are going to have to roll. The final piece I wanted to uh, talk about is just an update on on the tax extenders package. Yeah. We've we've talked a lot about that over the last few weeks. Yeah. There was actually some you know things were looking a little better. We thought that the that may actually move in the Senate. And it's stalled. Talk to us about where we are. At, at the end of the day, the, uh, my view is there has to be a tax extender package because the Congress and the President aren't going to allow all these tax provisions, uh, accelerated depreciation, and the uh, the uh, work production tax credit, and R and D tax credit. They're, they're not going to let these things expire. But uh, you know, uh, the great thing about this program that we do is it shows how fallible we are. It was my it was my belief that the, at the end of the day, the Republicans would make some noise about Harry Reid's tactics of not permitting them to have any amendments, but would acquiesce because of the importance of these these uh, tax benefits. But they didn't. Uh, they said, "Listen, you know, Senator Reid, uh, you you have to give us some amendments. We have to have the opportunity to talk." And what they really want to talk about is the Keystone Pipeline, uh, um, among uh, most others. And so now, uh, my understanding is there are negotiations between Senator McConnell and, and Republicans and Senator Reid to try and figure out, one, if Senator Reid will allow amendments and if he'll allow them what they are, and if that then satisfies the Republicans so that they can then move forward with the bill. At the end of the day, though, do you still feel pretty confident that we're going to have to have a deal on extenders? We're going to have a tax extender deal uh, before, uh, I, I would think, before July the 4th. And um, and many of them will be made retroactive to to when they expired. I, I you know, you, you should never say never, but I I, <laughs> I, I, I I am hard pressed to believe that they would let this happen. Well, we will see in the weeks ahead then. Perfect. Thank you very much, Congressman. Thank you.